Next Sunday, see Dateline Disneyland on ABC Television Network. That American Bandstand man, Dick Clark, helps Patty Page introduce her two newest recordings. It's musical fun next over ABC Television Network. Introducing the world's newest, silliest, and hamburger eatingest clown, Ronald McDonald. Now, where is that clown? Oh, Ronald. 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 Hey, Ronald. Here I am, kid. Hey, isn't watching TV fun? Especially when you got delicious McDonald's hamburgers. Ronald, you can't be on TV and watch it at the same time. Now, come on and meet the boys and girls. Oh, we've already met. I know we're going to be friends, too, because I like to do everything boys and girls like to do. Especially when it comes to eating those delicious McDonald's hamburgers. A magic tray here keeps me well supplied. McDonald's hamburgers, french fries, and milkshakes. Watch for me on TV. We'll have lots of fun. He's Ronald McDonald, the hamburger happy clown. A McDonald's drive-in restaurant is his favorite place in town. McDonald's is our kind of place. It's such a happy place. Hap, 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 happy place. A clean and snappy place. McDonald's is our kind of place. McDonald's believes in getting food to your kids before they get to each other. Such good food, too. McDonald's famous French fries, triple thick creamy shakes, lean beefy cheeseburgers and hamburgers, icy cold soft drinks, and here's a plus, spill-proof lids on all beverages. Another plus, napkins that are big as a bib. Quality, cleanliness, extra care service, that's McDonald's. A total value that's unmatched anywhere. McDonald's is our kind of place. Your kind of place. Oh, Marvel the Mustang, he's almost for real. Just saddle him up with spurs on your heel. No winding, no batteries. What must you? Marvel the Mustang, do we love you? Ride him in a roundup. Run him in a race. The winner by a nose. Marvel the Mustang, do we love you? Get Marvel the Mustang by Marks. Hello, hello, can you stay a while? Hello, hello, good to see you smile. Are you hungry? What would you like? At Burger Chef, we'll treat you right. At Burger Chef, we just can't stand to let anyone walk away hungry. So we went all out and built the Super Chef. One quarter pound of lean beef, pickles, onions, tomatoes, catsup, dressing, and fresh lettuce. It's the most all-out hamburger you ever saw. And you'll only see it here where we go all out to please your family. Burger Chef, we'll always treat you right. You know we'll always treat you right. Hello, hello. Take Malibu Barbie and her suntan friends With their glasses and their towels Where the road never ends in Barbie's new country camper Look what you get. A picnic setup, a pop-out tent, sleeping bags, a camper kitchen In Barbie's new country camper Barbie's country camper home Mattel Sunset Dolls and Barbie's Country Camper All sold separately Kellogg's puts its brand on a real Western-style breakfast. Made from sun-high Western corn. Popped inside out to get at all that pure corn energy. Sugar pops under the Kellogg's brand. Roasted to a campfire crispness. And sugar cubes. Sugar pops from Kellogg's. Kellogg's puts more in the morning. More! Everybody ready to get your picture taken? To celebrate cheeseburger time at McDonald's, Ronald was taking pictures of all his friends. Okay. 
smile and say cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Very good. Here's a cheeseburger for you. Hey, who's next? Susie. All set? Okay, smile and say cheeseburger. Very good. Here's a cheeseburger for you. You know McDonald's cheeseburgers are so delicious you almost have to smile. Ahoy! How about a cheeseburger for me? Oh, no, Captain Crook. Not till you learn to smile. Oh, really? Watch this. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger! He did it! Yeah! If you want something to smile about, just say cheeseburger at McDonald's. In McDonald's land. That's the way, little lady. Keep on eating those sugar-frosted flakes and you'll be a tiger in no time. <coughs> Go with Tony the Tiger and get what it takes to start every morning Kellogg's sugar-frosted flakes. Big, crisp flakes with a secret toasted in sugar-frosted. T-I-G-E-R. Go with the tiger! Oh, that's the old team spirit. Daddy said I could have my own car, but only if I took care of it. And since I don't know much about what makes cars go, I found somebody to help me out. He's the new man in my life. The car man at my sitco station. He's like the telephone man or a dry cleaning man. Only the car man knows everything about keeping my car running right. He not only puts great gasoline in the car, the car man checks the shock so my car runs smooth. And he makes sure my radiator doesn't lose its cool. The car man tunes this great big engine better than I tune my 12-string guitar. I think the car man's just about the greatest idea for cars ever. Even Daddy agrees. There's a car man for every woman at six go. It's a nice place to visit. Hello, I'm June Lockhart. Things you aren't using can be given new life when you give them to the Salvation Army. And the refurbishing of your items can provide work therapy to help men and women recover from complex problems. So please help. Call for the Red Shield truck. You can even take a tax deduction. Watch Richard Rose. He's proving that epilepsy can be overcome today. Thanks to effective treatment, many people with epilepsy, like Richard, are achieving goals you never thought possible. Epilepsy, it's not what you think. Ask the people who know. Write Epilepsy Foundation of America, Washington, D.C., 20013. WABC-TV, New York. I don't think that there is anything more difficult or more disheartening that I have to do as a rabbi than walk into a funeral chapel. I realize that no matter what prayers I read or what words I use, none will help to remove or in any way mitigate the pain that fills the hearts of the family. But I have learned not just as a rabbi, but also as a child that has lost a parent, that you cannot have life without death, just as you cannot have sunshine without clouds, or dawn without dust. There is a most meaningful story that is told of two children playing in a garden. All of a sudden, both of them run into the house. One child turns to her mother and says, Mother, the garden is such an ugly place to be in. Why do you say that, asks the mother. Because wherever I turn, I see roses, but each rose is surrounded by thorns that hurt me. The other says, Mother, the garden is a beautiful place to be in. Why do you say that? child answers, wherever I turn, I see thorns, but each thorn is surrounded by roses. Let us remember that while some people only see thorns, others see roses. Thus, if today we cry, yesterday we most likely smiled with our beloved. If today we are impoverished, yesterday we were, were enriched. And if today we feel thorns, then yesterday we beheld roses. This is station WABC-TV New York, channel 7, key station in the ABC television network. WABC-TV studios are located at the ABC Television Center, 7 Lincoln Square, New York. 
Programs are transmitted from the top of the World Trade Center in Manhattan with a frequency of 174 to 180 megahertz. WABC TV operates on Channel 7 by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. Now speaking for the entire staff, this is Wally Parker wishing you a pleasant good night and inviting you to join us this morning at 625 for more outstanding entertainment on Channel 7. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Channel 7, WABC TV, New York. You're watching Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Ernie Anastas and Roz Abrams, Sam Champion with weather, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Later in Eyewitness News, WNBC Radio will be signing off for good as a channel swap takes place. The sounds of WNBC radio will be silenced in a few minutes. Garrett Glazer will tell you how they're signing off for good. Back in the news, we have this story for you tonight. You know, for 62 years, WNBC radio has been part of New York, but no more. The station has been sold, the call letters are changing, and so is the format. Entertainment reporter Garrett Glazer is here now with details on the changing of the dial. Ernie, Roz, at exactly 5.30 tonight, MS Broadcasting will transfer its all-sports WFAN radio from 10.50 to 6.60 on the AM dial. That frequency has long been home for the flagship radio station of the national broadcasting company, NBC. That is, until NBC, part of RCA, was sold to General Electric, which soon decided it would get out of the radio business. A farewell get-together in the corridors at the station today. A chance to say goodbye and good luck. Million-dollar morning man Don Imus will keep his job. He'll report to new management Monday. He did not want to talk today. Sportscaster Don Cricky is another survivor. Well, they're great call letters, you know, in this business. And I guess it's part of the evolution of uh, radio that uh, they go away. General manager Peg Kelly told me some here are sad, others relieved that the dark day is finally here. Well, I guess you could just say it's a business decision. Uh, GE bought NBC a couple of years ago and made the decision to get out of the radio business. Back in the newsroom, it was quiet and sad. And in business affairs, Harvey Eckstein was still at his desk, as he's been for 31 years. I'm really sad about not so much me going, but the fact that the station will just completely disappear when people turn on WNBC in the morning. There will be no WNBC. But the end of WNBC radio is also something else, for this is a station that made history, that broke new ground back when broadcasting was in its infancy. The biggest stars in the world worked for NBC Radio, Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, Eddie Cantor, Groucho Marx, Al Jolson, Jimmy Durante, Red Skelton, Fanny Bryce, Burns and Allen, Ozzie and Harriet, Jack Benny and Mary Livingston. 
everybody dance. Tonight, WNBC air personality Alan Colmes will preside over the final sign-off. Uh, I've listened to the station since the early 1950s when Bill Cullen was the morning man. Uh, to be the one to preside over the final moments is the greatest honor I've had in my career. Yeah. But it's so sad to see the dismantling of the radio empire of NBC. This is radio. NBC is synonymous with radio. The company was founded on radio, and this is called Radio City. So uh, to lose that is, is saddening. WNBC Radio 66 AM meets its demise in its 66th year on the air. Proof, if you need it, of just how profound and turbulent are the changes going on in broadcasting in this country today. You know, 66, 660 AM is a clear channel, 50,000 watt station. You can hear it in 35 yep. states at night, which is why it's so valuable to yeah. broadcasters. So many of us have had a uh, background in radio, so That's we uh, take a moment everybody. to salute the great moments on WNBC radio over yes, those sir. many years. Sorry to see you go. Yep. Thank you, Garrett. Our final story this evening will not come as a great surprise. The actor Michael Landon died today at his home in California just three months after he was diagnosed with pancreatic and liver cancer. He was 54 years old. In the movies and on television, he often portrayed underdogs struggling to overcome enormous difficulties. The part seemed to come pretty naturally to him. Here's ABC's Judy Muller. When Michael Landon learned that he had inoperable cancer, he decided to confront his private demons in a public way. He called a news conference. I have uh, cancer of the pancreas and uh, the liver. Despite the odds against surviving, Landon vowed to fight the disease with as much strength and humor as he could muster. Uh, you've got to show a pilot that's going on, uh, you made for this fall. That's right. Call uh, us. Call us. I uh, made it for CBS. Uh, I don't get better. It's their second mistake since buying baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting the odds was a way of life for Landon. Born Eugene Orowitz, he had an unhappy childhood in Collingswood, New Jersey, where he felt isolated as one of the few Jewish children in town. In an autobiographical film he made later, Landon showed how he overcame that isolation by becoming a champion javelin thrower in high school. Holy! What are you, Mighty Mouse? No, he's super Jew! In Hollywood, Eugene Orowitz became Michael Landon, and Michael Landon became a teenage werewolf in a film now considered a cult classic. The transformation in his career came with Bonanza, in which he played little Joe Cartwright for 14 years. Good morning! Good morning, Pa. Same to you, Big Brother Hoss. Boy, weather's clear, sunny, like they say, top of the day. With his next series, Little House on the Prairie, Landon turned to writing and directing, as well as acting. His favorite theme of overcoming hardship was woven into almost every episode. When Landon learned of his cancer diagnosis, he joked that his most recent series was good training, since he played the part of a dead man trying to earn his wings as an angel. No other male star has had three consecutive TV series that lasted five years or longer. But Landon did not see his TV work as his greatest accomplishment. I have the greatest wife, best kids. See, for me, the world will be... a better place because of my kids they're good people. Landon leaves nine children by three marriages, his wife Cindy and innumerable fans. If it's to be, it's to be and, uh, and it's the beginning of another adventure. Mm -hmm. Judy Muller, ABC News, Los Angeles. That's our report on World News tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night. Says a home run at a Yankees game helped her get a heart transplant. We're going to have those stories tonight after Oprah on Eyewitness News at 5. And you guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, you as well. Me Thank too. you so much. Today. And we are glad to have you on this historic day at this historic moment. We've been talking for months about the digital transition. Now it is finally happening. We are on the brink. Analog. At 1230, we will officially make the switch to digital TV. Now to the big moment, Bill. Not just one of our control rooms, the place where we're going to push the switch, and you're going to see that in less than two minutes. This really is a historic moment, Ken Lori, as the hourglass on analog runs out. You know, most people in the tri-state, the overwhelming majority, already have digital, but there was always a choice in the matter. That choice is no more at, as of 12.30. It is really a big way, a big change in the way we communicate.
It's been more than 80 years since the invention of television, and really, few things have changed our lives more. In the first years of commercial broadcasting, TV was limited to just a few live programs and newsreels a few hours a day. Color changed the landscape dramatically, and then cable turned TV on its ear. Some of us remember when television stations used to sign off in the wee hours of the morning. Now, that doesn't happen anymore. And even though analog TV is going away and the new digital Channel 7 is taking its place, Channel 7 and Eyewitness News will still be here, being part of your life for all the future history yet to come. Well, we are getting ready. I'm going to turn my back a little bit to you. We have about a 35 seconds until this happens. Now, for those of you who already have digital, who have cable, who have Fios, who have a satellite, you're not going to see anything. We are going to be here the same as we always have. For those of you who have analog, in about 25 seconds, 20 seconds or so, your signal will go off. If you have a converter box, you're going to need to reboot that converter box. We've been talking to you a lot about that. We want no viewer left behind. This is a change in the way we communicate, and in about 10 seconds, the old analog way that has ushered in television for the last 60 to 70 years will be no more. We're going to count down to four, three. Bill Beam is going to push the button over here. Two, one. Bill, push the button. Digital 7 should be coming on. Now, if you have digital television already, nothing's changed. You've just seen our control room. Our digital era has now begun. Congratulations, we should be singing Old Lang Syne. Where's the, the balloons and the ball drop? I feel like Ryan Seacrest here. We have, if you have a converter box, we hope you rescan it because right now you, ha you will not be seeing anything. If you're at, at work watching this, if you're at someone else's house watching this and you have a converter box at home, when you get home, make sure that you scan, rescan, and reboot your digital converter box because that's the only way, because we've done this signal switch, I'm not going to uh, do all the PhD stuff to explain why you need to do this, but trust me, you need to reboot your, com your, uh, your converter box so you'll be able to see us and all your favorite Channel 7 programs and ABC and Eyewitness News beginning at 5 o'clock today. This is an historic day, Ken and Lori. Um, we are now one minute and six seconds into the total digital era. Analog is so pre-1230. And we say goodbye to that. So it, I, I, I felt a tingle at 12:30. I hope you all did too. <laughs> Absolutely. We are still the same Channel 7, That's and we right. thank all of you for being here for all these many decades. And we hold hands and walk, march together into this new yeah. digital era. And who knows what life has to hold for us? Feel kind of hip, don't you? Now? I feel so cool right now. Yeah. <laughs> you look so purely high def. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> all all right. right, sir. And, of course, it is an exciting time. We're going to be with you every step of the way. And if you have friends and neighbors, family members who are having problems with the transition, you'll want to pass the information along. Our phones will be here staff today and all over the weekend to ensure the viewers can keep watching. The number you want to call, 212-456-7000. That's 212-456-7000. Or you can yeah. call the FCC as well. Their hotline, you go to our website. Thank you for being with us. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Right here in Newtown, Connecticut, the site today of a mass shooting and this time gunfire aimed at elementary school children. We're here in front of the Newtown United Methodist Church where we've watched people gathering all evening long as tonight the details are still pouring in. There are 27 victims, 20 children, 7 adults. And we've heard all day about the incredible response by teachers inside the school, which is considered one of the leading schools in the nation. And also tonight, we have a new image of the suspected shooter as we tell you everything we know about who did it, what kind of weapons, and why. And we begin all of this with 2020 anchor Chris Cuomo, and he's here right now with me, Chris. Diane, it is an almost um, unimaginable scene. What we know so far is that inside this elementary school was a group of young kids. They were and there was one deranged man who decided to take it all away. This morning, the Sandy Hook Elementary School was full of kids concerned about Christmas. And then at 9.40 a.m., shots rang out. I want you to the individual that I have on the phone is continuing to hear what he believes to be done. Inside, little kids are under attack. We heard all this racket at um, our classroom. Horrible things are happening. Teachers make sure they're safe and then do the unimaginable. 
And what did the teacher do then? Um, she read us some books and we talked about things and they played little games in there. Did you hear any more bad noises? Um, yes. The teacher's calm is matched by a storm of police activity. Word of possibly two shooters sparks searches of the surrounding area. Children are rushed out of the school, single file, hands on shoulders, eyes squeezed shut. We got in the line and we had to close our eyes. How did you find your way out with your eyes closed? Um, we all put our hands on other people's shoulders and then our teacher held the first person's hand and she let us out. Chaos. Complete chaos. Nobody knew where anyone was. It was a mob scene of children and police and adults. Ella's mom, Amy, and dozens of other families search for their kids as information starts to trickle in. I heard that children were taken out bloody. I'm very scared, worried about my son, worried about the other kids that I know here. I, it was terrifying. It's, it's, I'm still terrified. I think I'm still in shock about it all. I still don't know everything that happened. A situation that couldn't be any more terrifying. Kids at the mercy of a deranged gunman. And yet, it keeps getting worse. Yeah, these units in the pool, I got uh, bodies here. Among the dead, 20-year-old gunman Adam Lanza and his mother, who was a teacher's aide at the elementary school. He came with a bulletproof vest and four guns, including two semi-automatic handguns and possibly an assault rifle, say authorities. He killed so many of the kids she loved. It's a very, very difficult scene for the family members, for all the responding first responders. It's a tragedy. It's a tragic scene. And yet many more survived, like little Ella, who will still have a chance at a Merry Christmas. It's over. Okay. Do you know that now? Yeah. You know, all these survivors, they're so young, and that makes it so tragic. And yet, at the same time, the families are hoping they're young enough, Diane, that they'll be able to forget and move on with their lives. So tell us now the latest details, whatever we've learned about why and motives of the suspected shooter. It is always so important to us because that's the one thing we can learn in this situation is what drove this person to this horrible thing. And yet now it's getting more confusing. Authorities now believe that the gunman's mother was found killed in her home, not at the school. So the question remains now larger than ever. Why did this man go to this school? Why did he attack these kids with such intensity? Target so many young kids. And we know details are still coming in, as we've been saying, and we'll bring you up to date throughout this hour tonight as we are in this special broadcast. Uh, as we drove into town, I know you saw those beautiful hills coming into this incredibly wonderful town. And tonight we see the flags at half staff right here in Newtown and across the country. The flags are also at half staff as today President Obama addressed the nation tearing up as he talked about the grieving parents and their small children. The majority of those who died today were children. Uh, beautiful little kids between the ages of 5 and 10 years old. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. Good evening, I'm Ty Hernandez at ABC News headquarters in New York. We interrupt regular programming to bring you breaking news. Congressman John Lewis has died, a hero of the civil rights movement. John Lewis stood shoulder to shoulder with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. fighting for equal rights and later became a longtime congressman from Georgia, often referred to as the conscience of the House. Late last year, Lewis announced he was undergoing treatment for stage four pancreatic cancer. In his statement announcing his illness, Lewis said, I have been in some kind of fight for freedom, equality, basic human rights for nearly my entire life. He went on to say, I've never faced a fight quite like the one I have now. ABC News Byron Pitts looks back at the iconic life of John Lewis. John Robert Lewis didn't simply witness history. He shaped it. March for it. Bled for it. Not once, not twice, but every time he was called upon. As Lewis liked to put it, by just getting in the way. Keep marching. Keep sitting in. Keep standing in. Keep protesting. Until the sagging walls of segregation come tumbling down. A sharecropper's son born in Troy, Alabama, 1940. Back when segregation was law. 
Jim Crow the Enforcer. The Montgomery bus boycott drew the attention of one teenager, and soon civil rights would become John Lewis's life work, and it nearly killed him. As a student at Fisk University, Lewis graduated from lunch counter sit-ins and bus boycotts to Freedom Rider, as would become his habit, where John Lewis put his heart, his head followed. That's him, bruised, bandaged, after he and other riders were beaten, shedding blood and standing up when others could not or would not. That became Lewis's calling card. We must cry and we all must cry together that we want our freedom and we want it now. 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 By 1963, at the age of 23, alongside Martin Luther King Jr., he was dubbed one of the big six leaders of the civil rights movement who helped plan the historic march on Washington. My friend, let us not forget that we are involved in a serious social revolution. And on a high bridge in Selma, one of the low moments of the entire civil rights movement, there out front, John Lewis. 600 peaceful protesters crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge into the harsh heat of history. It would be known as Bloody Sunday. Violence unleashed by Alabama state troopers. Lewis, struck in the head, suffered a fractured skull. I was the first one to, to catch the blow. John Lewis was elected to Congress in November of 1986. He served as U.S. Representative of Georgia's 5th Congressional District, where he continued to get into what he called good trouble. I got arrested 40 times during the 6th District. And since I've been in Congress another five times. Lewis was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest civilian honor, in February of 2011. Generations from now, when parents teach their children what is meant by courage, the story of John Lewis will come to mind. An American who knew that change could not wait for some other person or some other time, whose life is a lesson in the fierce urgency of now. In recent years, he was an outspoken critic of President Trump, skipping the president's inauguration and first State of the Union address. He also took part in widespread protests against the president's zero-tolerance immigration policy. We are getting in good trouble to set people free. I will go to the borders. I get arrested again. Lewis often reminding people to choose love over hate, courage over fear. It doesn't matter whether we are black or white, Latino, Asian American or Native American. It doesn't matter whether we are straight or gay. We are one people. We are one family. We all live in the same house. Quite a legacy. That was ABC's Byron Pitts reporting, and Byron joins us now. Byron, how will John Lewis be remembered? I think... Tonight, John Lewis joins the League of Giants in American history. This is a man who was a part of history, who gave his all he had to it. You know, in the course of my career, I've interviewed presidents, warlords, dictators, gangbangers. John Lewis was the toughest man I've ever known. He was also the gentlest man. He was someone in Washington where it's hard to make friends. There are lots of people who did not like John Lewis's politics. Who you won't find a person who didn't respect the man, and most people love the man. He, you know, a lot of us, you know, talk the talk. John Lewis talked it, walked it, lived it. He is one of those forces in, in American history that, when he was called upon to put his life in harm's way. To, in, in his best estimation, to help make America better, he did. And you know, I, I spent a lot of time with Congressman Lewis, and for all the all the dark days in American history that he witnessed, he was a part of. He was also one of the most optimistic people I've ever known. He loved America as much as any American I've ever met. He'll be remembered as a man who gave his full measure to this nation every time he was called upon. And tonight. As I said, he rests with giants. All right. Thank you for your perspective, Byron. ABC's Byron Pitts reporting. Congressman John Lewis, a hero of the civil rights movement, has died. He had been battling pancreatic cancer, and he will be remembered for his long history in politics.
and for the fight for equality. I'm Ty Hernandez at ABC News. To find out more about the life and legacy of John Lewis, stick around for Good Morning America and tune into abcnews.com. Thank you for joining us. This has been a special report from ABC News. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.